ഹമദുലിമിയ <laughs> فمن زحزها عن النار وادخل الجنه فقد فاز وما الحياه الدنيا الا متاع الغرور وقال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم الموت جسر يوصل الحبيب الى الحبيب او كما قال صلى الله عليه وسلم السلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته hope that we digest some of what he said and not only digest it but put it into practice inshallah and make our lives better Before I start I just want to mention two or three English quotes pertaining to the occasion. There's an English quote that says life is measured by the contribution you make and not by the duration you live. Life is measured by the contribution you make not by the duration you live. A long life may not be good enough but surely a good life is long enough. This is what some of what Molana was saying, right? A long life may not be good enough but surely a good life is long enough. The great giant Imam Shafi'i rahmatullahi alayhi he has a very famous book is called Diwan of Imam Shafi'i. It's a book that ulama read, scholars, very brimming with knowledge. He said that there are many people who are dead and gone, but their memories remain alive in the perceptions of people. There are many people who are dead and gone, but their memories remain alive in the perceptions of people in the minds of people it doesn't matter how long ago they passed they've passed away you keep talking about them you keep remembering them and he also said there are many people who are alive but they are dead in the minds of people there are many who are alive but they are dead in the minds of people don't remember that people don't talk about them because there was no contribution of theirs in society right that's why it is said life is not about the days you live but about the moments you live remember the moments of life and not the days of life there are many people who come to your life or come into your life as a blessing and there are also some who comes into your life as lessons some comes into your life as blessings and some comes into your life as lessons it's also said that your life you should live a life in such a way that it becomes a reminder to the world who you are right and let it be inspiring it should be live a life an inspirational life let it be remembered that when you're gone because you have to inspire to aspire before you expire you have to what you have to aspire to inspire aspire to inspire someone before you expire there was a great companion great sahabi by the name of abu ubaida bin jarrah radiyallahu anhu very great companion at the time of his death before i mention what he said let me tell you who he was this great sahabi of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam 
once Sayyidina Umar radiallahu anhu he gathered the Sahaba in a room and uh, in this room they were great companions great companions they were veterans of Badr they were veterans of Uhud veterans of Bay'atul Ridwan Fath Makkah and so on Sahaba of great caliber great companions and this incident is mentioned in one of the books of Imam al-Bukhari by the name of Tariq al-Saghir many of you may not even hear about this book you know many of us think today and I'm gonna make this very open Mulan is here many of us think today that Imam Bukhari has only compiled Sahih al-Bukhari this is all we know about Imam Bukhari, Sahih al-Bukhari, mashallah. Al-Adab al-Mufrad. Oh, is there a book also called Al-Adab al-Mufrad by Imam al-Bukhari? Oh, yes. Is there another book called Al-Tariq al-Saghir by Imam al-Bukhari? Oh, yes. Oh, we don't know. We only know about Bukhari. You know, become muftis and we become start to become muhaddithin and we read only the, the English translation of Bukhari and we start giving fatwas not only we don't even know the Arabic of Bukhari the hadith <laughs> it's like testing the water standing on the shore and wanting to know how deep is the water we are standing on the shore and we want to know how deep is the water Imam Bukhari only one thing we know about Imam Bukhari we have, we have many more books authored by Imam al-Bukhari so this is our limited knowledge. Limited knowledge is very, very detrimental. Very detrimental. So, Zayd ibn, Al Zayd ibn Al Qam radiallahu anhu, he narrates from his father, and this incident is mentioned on page 29 of Al Tariq al Saghir, that Sayyidina Umar radiallahu anhu, he gathered the Sahaba. And he was asking them, you know, questions. And one of the questions he put forward in front of them, he said, how would you desire and want Islam to spread in the world? How would you desire the growth of this deen? Everyone have his own vision. Everyone have his own understanding. Everyone has his own thinking about how Islam should spread. Everyone uses his own method. At work you will find hundreds of theories as to how Islam should prosper and spread everyone puts in their two cents and whatever but what was, what was the vision I'm, what I'm talking about this Sahabi Ubaidah bin Jarrah radiallahu anhu right so Umar radiallahu anhu he gathered the Sahaba and he told him tell me how would you like to spread Islam and I spend every bit of it for deen mashallah good look at their contributions what they were thinking these are some I'm saying these were veterans of Sahaba. These were not people like me and you. You had veterans of Badr in there who Imam Bukhari has mentioned in Sahih al-Bukhari that you take the name of any Badri Sahabi and you make dua and your dua will never be rejected. 313 Sahaba of Badr, take any of their names. Go in Bukhari and you'll find a whole chapter mentioned about that. Rasulullah told him, if alu ma shi'tum, from today onwards, do whatever you want to do. Jannah is yours. Sahaba of Badr. What did he say about Bay'atul Ridwan? Those who took allegiance under the tree. Allah says about them, لَقَدْ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ إِذْ يُبَايِعُونَكَ تَحْتَ الشَّجَرَةِ Allah was pleased with them. Rasulullah said, لَا يَدْخُلُ النَّارُ مَنْ مَنْ بَايَعَ تَحْتَ الشَّجَرَةِ The one who took allegiance under the tree will never enter hellfire. Those Sahaba, Umar was asking them, how would you like Islam to spread? He was not asking children who wanted electronic toys to play with, to desire. These were intellectual individuals. Wow. He wanted to know what contribution they would make. What did I say? Life is measured by the contribution you make and not by the duration you live. You know Sayyidina Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu. Sayyidina Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, he made a contribution, a financial contribution in his life 
for the welfare of Islam, the amount he gave for deen was about 35,000 dirhams. If that is being equivalent and equal in today's time in gold, listen to the figure. That 35,000 gold coins that Sayyidina Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu give in his lifetime for deen, if you equivalent that today, in terms of gold, it will equal to $60 million. $60 million. One Sahabi contribution to deen. One Sahabi. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, I have offset the kindness of anyone who did any kindness to me or Dean, I repeat every one of them. This was one of the quality of the Prophet ﷺ also. Anyone who would do any kindness to him, he would repay. Anytime anyone who would do something for Dean, he would repay. But he said, Oh Abu Bakr, your generosity and your kindness to me is so much that I left it to Allah to repay you. Allah will repay you, O Abu Bakr. I cannot do it. It's too much. How, Abu Bakr, how Allah will repay Abu Bakr? Radhi, I'm diverting a little bit, coming back on Abu, Abu Ubaidullah radiallahu anhu to mention what, he, what Umar said about him. Inna Allah yatajalla li nasi amma wa yatajalla li Abu Bakr in khassa. On the day of Qiyamah when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reveal himself to every one of us in Jannah on a general note. On a general note, Allah will reveal Himself to us once a week, insha'Allah. And we will see who our Allah is. This is according to the aqeedah of the Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah. And do not go with wrong ideas. This will happen. Rasulullah said, This will happen, and it will happen. This will happen. You will see your Allah. I will see my Allah, insha'Allah, in Jannah. When Allah will reveal Himself to everyone on a General note, Allah will reveal himself exclusively to Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu on a special note. You alone, you alone Abu Bakr, one to one, me and you. When all the gates of Jannah will be calling out, uh, will be, we will wish that our names be called out through one of these gates of Jannah to enter into them. All the gates of Jannah will be calling out whose name? Whose name? Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, enter through me, enter through me, enter through me. It's a privilege if you enter through me. Abu Bakr, why? The contribution he made in deen. Mawlana was talking about is we have to make contribution in society. We can't be living alone. We have to make contribution, some form of contribution in deen and in society. Going back to Abu Ubaidah radiallahu anhu, Umar radiallahu anhu was asking them, and everybody was giving his answer. And Umar radiallahu anhu, he was not impressed. He was not him. Uh, Umar, what will happen to you in the grave when the two angels will come to question you? When they will come with a hammer. This is hadith in Bukhari. Go check it out. They will come with a, such a huge hammer that if they would hit it once, it will, it will break mountains. It will reduce mountains to dust. And this is the hammer they will take and hit the inhabitants in the grave. You can't answer those questions. In the Qabr, <coughs> Rasulullah is telling Umar, Oh Umar, what will be your situation when you will be placed in that Qabr and the angels will come to question you? Umar radiallahu anhu said, Ya Rasulullah, would I be in my sense? Would I be in my sense? Rasulullah said, yes, O oh Umar, you will be in your sense. Umar then said, Ya Rasulullah, then I will take care of it. Subhanallah. Can I say I will take care of it? Can you say you will take care of it? No. We can say we will take care of those questions in the Qabr. Because those are not questions from the tongue, brothers and sisters. Those are questions from the heart. How we live to those three questions. How we live them. Allah sent us to live those questions. How we live them. Understand that. Umar radiallahu anhu said, I will take care of it. Rasulullah left. Umar left actually and he was going. Rasulullah sent to call him back. He said, oh Umar, come back. Come back. He said, Jibreel just came to me. Jibreel just came to me and Jibreel told me, oh Umar, Jibreel informed me 
that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala informed Jibreel to tell me, O Omar, instead of the angels questioning you in the qabr, you will question them. You will question them. Instead of they asking you, Man Rabbuk, who is your Allah? You will ask them, Allahu Rabbi, Man Rabbukuma. Allah is my Allah, who is your Allah? Muhammad is my Prophet, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, who is your Nabi? Islam is my deen, what is your deen? That Umar, that Umar radiallahu anhu. So he was not impressed with the, with the answers of the companions. So one of them said, oh Umar, tell us, tell us what is your desire for deen to spread? What is your desire for deen to spread? He said, listen to, listen to me. He said, Atamanna an yakuna mil ahad al bayti rijala. I desire, I want that this room that we are in, one of you wanted money, one of you wanted gold, one of you wanted silver, one of you wanted gemstones and to spend it in the path of Allah. Let me tell you what I want. I want men, men like Abu Ubaidah bin Jarrah, men like Mu'adh ibn Jabal, men like Hudayfa ibn Yaman radiallahu anhu. And he mentioned these, the name of these three Sahaba. Let me clone 1,000 of Hulayf bin Yaman. Let me manufacture 100 of Abu Ubaidah. Let me make 100 of Mu'ad ibn Jabal. Give these three men to me and leave the crisis of the world to me. I will solve it. These men, what were in their lives? What were in the lives of these three individuals? I don't have the time to get into it. That Umar was screaming about, give me these men and leave the world to me. I will spread Islam with these men alone. It was more than them being Sahaba. Every Sahabi was a Sahaba. What were in their lives? Ubaidah bin Jarrah radiallahu anhu, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, لِكُلِّ أُمَّةِ amina." Every Ummah has a source of pride. And the pride of my Ummah is Abu Ubaidah bin Jarrah. Rasulullah sallallahu said, there is a time that, will, that is to come that Loyalty will become absent in this ummah. Trustworthiness will become absent. It will become something unusual. And somebody will tell you, hey, travel to so-and-so place. Go to Trinidad, go to Guyana, go to Pakistan, go to here, go to there. Why? Why should I go? There is a loyal man there. There's a trustworthy man living there, so go and see that man. It will become so absent and non-existent in the lives of people, loyalty that you will have to travel to go find a loyal man. In Jarrah radiallahu anhu said, at the time of his death, he told the Sahaba, he told him, do three things for me. Never miss your salah. Never miss your salah one. He said, make sure you're punctual in giving your zakah. The third thing he said, be loyal in life. Be loyal in life. And the fourth thing he said, I am dying now. No matter if you live for a thousand years, you will die like me one day. No matter if you live for a thousand years, you will die just like me one day. No matter how long we came for, life is not about how long you live. Although, long life is good, right? And this is from Hadith also. You know how long life is good, brother Wasim, how old was your mom when she passed away? 92. You know what the Prophet says about that? Hadith Qudsi. When you reach 80 years in Deen, I'm going to eliminate the rest. <laughs> I'm going to mention, I'm going to mention from 80 and 90 because of what some other time you ask me, I will tell you. 80 years in Deen, serving Allah, being in Deen, growing old in this Deen, these hairs in your face and your head is getting old. You know, Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in 63 years, you know, he had only 23 gray hairs on his head and hair. Today we live for 63, we live, we are 23 and we get 63. <laughs> like me, yeah. So, people grow old in Dean. you grow old in Dean. Allah loves this. Allah love it. <coughs> when my servant reaches, I didn't mention the fadil of 80. When you mention 80, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, even your small mistakes are not written down. The small one that you will do here and there, that also is forgiven. That also. 
The small ones here and there. The big ones are gone, forgiven by Allah. The small ones here and there, mistakes are not even written down. And when you reach 90, when you reach 90, you become the guest of Allah on earth. Your mom was the guest of Allah, brother Wasim. On earth, you become the guest of Allah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will show you his hospitality in the day of Qiyamah. إِنَّ اللَّهَ يَسْتَحْيِي أَنْ يُعَذِّبَ ذَا شَيْبَةٍ فِي الْإِسْلَامِ Allah feels ashamed. Allah takes ghayra to punish someone who has grown old in deen. Someone who has grown old in deen. Don't black your beards. Let it go, go on your hair and your head. Don't camouflage. This has value in the sight of Allah. This is noor. Every grain of it is noor. You black it, you get nothing. White is noor. Hadith of the Prophet ﷺ. That has value. Allah feels ashamed. Allah feels shy to punish someone who has grown old in deen. How can I punish someone who has obeyed me for 60, 70, 80, 90 years? How can I punish that person? I cannot. And I will conclude because of time. The regrets of three people on the day of Qiyamah. Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi said, three people, three people, they will have great regrets on the day of Qiyamah. May Allah save us from being in any of these three categories. One, he said, a man, a man, who had complete control over those in under his authority. You have authority, maybe you're a boss in your job and you have people working for you, right? Or you're a father and you have children, whoever is in authority. And you have full authority under those under you and you are disobeying Allah. But because of your authority under those people, those people are obeying Allah. <coughs> those people are obeying Allah who you have authority over and you are disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And on the day of Qiyamah, those people who you had authority over, they ended up in Jannah and you ended up in Jahannam. You had full control, full authority over them. And they listened to you. What you tell them to do, they did. And by doing what you told them to do, they ended up in Jannah and you ended up in Hellfire. Second, second, a man who worked his whole life. A father who works his whole life, money accumulating, accumulating, working, working, working. And he dies and he leaves it behind. He leaves that money behind for his children in inheritance. It goes to them. He didn't leave it for them, but it goes to them in inheritance. And the children now uses that money of the father or whoever it is and gets into Jannah and the father gets into hellfire. Wow. The father, father will say, oh Allah, they have entered Jannah on my strength and my money. What I earned. Allah will say, yes, but you didn't do what you're supposed to do. They did. They did. They entered Jannah. You didn't, you didn't, ent you didn't do what you're supposed to do. You entered Jannah. Go. Regret. That person will have regret. And the last, may Allah save me from this. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, that scholar, that scholar whom Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala has blessed with deen, with Islamic knowledge, and with his advices, with his words, with his ceremonies and so on, people's lives change. People's lives change, but his life remains the same. His life does not affect the change that people's lives have affected. People will go to Jannah because of his words, because of his advices, but he will go to Jahannam. He will go to Jahannam. May Allah make, save us from that, inshallah. Amen. Myself, Paulana, you know, because we fall in that, we are in that category. We advise people. We have to affect the change first before we would like to see it in the lives of others. Because Allah will ask us another day of Qiyam. So these three people have the greatest regret under the of Qiyam. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, give us this understanding that we, it's not matter how long we live, it's how we live what contributions we make in life, right? Let us let it, let that be known, let it, that be seen, and be sincere in that also. Don't do things for people to recognize you. Don't people do things that people talk about you, right? Whether you do it, people will talk about you. Whether you don't do it, people will talk about you, right? But let 
it will be between you and Allah and Allah will make people talk about the goodness of you whatever good you do Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make it known Allah will make it known inshallah but Wasim's mom was very wealthy why am I saying this how many brothers and sisters nine you told me twelve I, I know twelve mashallah MashaAllah 12, if all 12 only make dua. Oh Allah, forgive my mom. You think you think Allah needs my dua or your dua? It's coming directly from 12 direct children. How many grandchildren? He might tell you just now. I don't know. Or maybe he have told you already. <coughs> Wealthy! Look what wealth she left behind. Huh? Allah bless all people in those days with many things, you know. Allah bless them. Right, and with, through that blessings, they left. They are leaving children behind that will take carry on their legacy. Brother Wasim is making the same effort that his children, inshallah, will carry on his legacy, and they will carry on. You want to leave that legacy behind that you are being remembered by people, even though you are gone, as the saying of Imam Shafi, rahmatullahi alayhi. Huh? You are gone 20, 50, 60 years, but people still remember you. And you are right now living and people are not even you know, thinking about you. Why? There is no contribution you're making in life. You're not doing anything in life. Do and you'll see how Allah will reward you, inshallah. May Allah forgive her and have mercy on you.